Hello, good morning. Today we will start uh, fault analysis of power system. Now, fault. What do you mean by fault? Fault means flow of undesired amount of current in undesired path. So, not it. Fault means undesired amount of current flow in undesired path. Let me see if the current is more or less than undesired, then that we can say it is fault. And fault can be classified in two parts. One is series fault, another is sun. Now series fault means open circuit and sun fault basically that is short circuit. Open circuit means open circuit means the in the circuit the impedance is infinite and if the infinite impedance is on current I is equal to V by infinity then that, that is equal to zero. So no current will flow that that's why it is called open circuit. And whereas in short circuit means the impedance is zero. So I will be V by zero and that is equal to infinity. So that means use current will flow. Now if the current is more then the production of heat I square R that will be used so that means that can destroy everything and electromagnetic thrust can be more and that means short circuit is a severe quantity and we have to study it more and open circuit it is due to failure of conductor if the conductor is open then open circuit will create and current will be zero and short circuit that means the impedance will be zero that means failure of insulation is the failure of conductor. Conductor failure is under open circuit and insulator failure, insulation failure is under short circuit. Now short circuit study is our main objective and we will see then short circuit will be classified in two part. What of that? Let us see. Now short circuit, short circuit can be classified in two part, one is symmetrical, and other is unsymmetrical, one is symmetrical, another is unsymmetrical. What is symmetrical? Symmetrical means if it is symmetric voltage, then the all the three voltages, suppose VA, VB and VC, if these three are voltage or current, whatever may be, IA, IB and IC, then Symmetrical means the magnitude of the each phase voltage will remain same and their angle will be 120 degree. That means the each voltage magnitude phase voltage is equal and they are displacing 120 degree. Similarly, the current magnitude of each phase IE, IB and IC all are equal and they are displacing 120 degree. It is symmetrical system. If this is symmetrical system, then we can say V is equal to VB is equal to VC. That means no need for calculation of 
If we calculate V A, then we can say it is equal to V B. It is equal to V C. Only you can say the that means the, uh, from V A, uh, V C is lacking 120 degree, or you can say V B is leading 120 degree from V A like that. Similarly, current so that means for symmetrical system, no, we need to calculate par H. That means it is a symmetrical for symmetrical calculation of for par phase calculation is enough for that whether it is current or whether it is voltage okay now for if fault occur then if fault is short circuit then huge current will flow and then it is classified in two part one is symmetrical and one is unsymmetrical then one thing you can ask me why short circuit study is essential for us now see this is essential because that means if the short circuit occurs in power system then how much current will flow or how much power should deliver through the different devices we have to know that why it is from design point of view whether if there is one if it is a power system this is generator and this is transformer and then it is transmission line and if we study the short circuit of this transmission line that means if we put a circuit breaker here so we have to know how much power should circuit breaker handle that means how much power circuit breaker should handle that we need before designing this circuit breaker and that is the requirement of short circuit study so that means how much short circuit current will flow through the circuit breaker and other devices like isolator and even the conductor and all the other switch gear devices so from that point of view and how also it is essential for stability point of view that means short circuit study is essential for smooth operation of power system okay now we we will focus our attention on symmetrical uh, fault and after completion of this we will move to unsymmetrical fault so let us start with symmetrical fault symmetrical fault means once again its perfect calculation is enough and all the phase voltages are 120 degree apart and their magnitude is equal and if we able to calculate uh, VA then VB, VC can be easily find out and or if we able to calculate IA then IV and IC can be find out easily okay so let us start with symmetrical fault Okay, I can erase it. I hope you note it. So once again, fault means undesired amount of flow, undesired amount of current flow in undesired path. Fault can be classified in two types: open circuit and short circuit. Open circuit due to failure of conductor and short circuit due to failure of insulation. And short circuit is classified in two part. One is symmetrical and other is unsymmetrical. Now symmetrical. Symmetrical Of the symmetrical fault, we have to follow some process. First, number one, whatever the problem will be there, first we have to create the single line diagram of the whole power system network. That means, first we have to draw, draw single line. 
diagram of power system network. First, draw single line diagram of power system network. This is your first job. Then, the next job is draw from the single line diagram, draw equivalent circuit or impedance diagram. Impedance diagram of the same network. This network first draw the single line diagram, then its impedance network, and third draw reactance diagram. Network. Now, in the impedance diagram, we know impedance in the impedance Z, there is R and X, that means resistance and reactance is there. Now, you know in the power system network, resistance is negligible with compared to reactance. And if the resistance is comparable with the reactance, then we can say this, it is ill condition of the power system, as you know that. And now, if we neglect that resistance, then only the reactance will be there. And by omitting the resistance, we can draw the reactance diagram of the network. So it's our procedure. We have to follow these, and then these, and then these, like that. And after that, we have to, I think, uh, they write it, draw single line diagram of the power system network, draw impedance diagram of the power system network and draw reactance diagram of the power system network. Then, four. Draw equivalent resistance of the whole network find out or calculate equivalent equivalent reactance of the network of the network now suppose that that is x equivalent when after completion of this, we can easily find out the fault current, then current is equal to, now the voltage up to the, at the fault point, that means V by X equivalent, it will give you the fault current. Once the fault current is known, that means it is equal to IF. When IF is known, then from IF we can find out the power of the power flow through the fault. That means if we know the fault voltage and if we know the current, then we can say the um, uh, from perfect system total fault MBA. So fault MBA. You can say fault power. Power, you can you know that fault can be um, power can be active, reactive, and apparent. Now, here we will consider the apparent power. That means fault voltage and fault current up to this, and this is far fetch. And if we multiply it three then total fault power we can find out. That means this is our motor. 
So fault current once the fault power is known, that means circuit breaker or other device should capable should be capable to handle with this amount of power safely. So we have to find out. Now there is we will see what are the problem to solve this. Okay. So not it. Four equivalent reactors from equivalent reactors V by X equivalent equivalent of fault current and fault power V IF VF IF into three. It is perfect and it is total. If we multiply it, then we will get the total. Okay. Suppose a power system network single line diagram, this is generator and you know after generator there will be a step of transformer, I am from step of transformer, this is transmission line and then it is step down transformer and then it is to load, suppose this is a load. There is a load, this is TR1, this is TR2, transformer 1, transformer 2, this is generator and this is transmission line. Now assume this generator has, is generating the voltage and assume it is like that it is, it generates some voltage is 11 K. Then Obviously that 11 kV, 11 kV, 11 kV Y, 132 kV. So that means it is step off up to 132 kV. And then from here it is step down transformer 132 kV, 11 kV and the load is 11 kV, under 11 kV the load is, okay. Now, see, here our target we know if this is V and if this is Z, suppose if it is V, if it is Z, then we can easily find out current I is equal to V by Z from Ohm's law. But here one loop. But if we draw the it is our target. If we if it is like that, then we will be very we are very convenient about this circuit Ohm's law. And there is only one loop and the calculation will be easy. Now let us find out that here the voltage is 11 kV, here 33 kV. Here whatever may be here, the impedance, here the difference of voltage. So can we draw a single jade and with the source it's it's not possible here because if we draw the equivalent circuit that means suppose here it is it is impedance circuit is like that it is, is equal to voltage E and it's R G X G like that, RGXG, it is the equivalent circuit of the, this alternator perfect system and then it is transformer, then transformer means it's R1, X1 and then it's it is the primary, then it is the second, then R2, X2 and like that, there will be another transformer here, it will be, it will be the next coil, it's secondary, it is like that, then it is the load, it will be. So here you can see there is three loop current, one here, then here and other here. So how, can I simplify this, here it is very difficult to if you solve it it's quite difficult and because
because why? Because here it is 11 kV, here it is 130. So the same voltage is not. So to solve this, to manage this problem, we will take one method and that is per unit method. We will take the help of per unit method. And by this per unit method, we will able to solve this type of problem very easily. So let us see what is the per unit method. In per unit method, here it is, there is so many whatever may be its voltage rating is like that, it has some reactance and it has some KVA or MVA rating. This transformer similarly has some KVA, KVA or MVA rating. This transformer has same MVA or KVA rating. Load has some rating, VA rating, like that. Then it's different. Now, we will take these with a common platform. That means we have to take one base, we have to select two things. One is base KVA and other is base voltage. Or you can say one is base power and other is base voltage. We, we should select. We can take this from the any So let us take one exact problem and then we will try to, we will see what is the real one, right. And the KVA rating and its reactance is 20% less than and it's 11 kV by 66 kV and it's 2000 kVA like that it is 66 kV and it's 5% its reactance is 5% and its reactance is also 5% assume it and it's it is it is also one five zero zero thousand kV. It may assume it. So there is so many KVA, here it is, here it is, here it is, load may be 1000 or whatever may be. That means the different KVA rating is there. Among them, we have to select one KVA and as a base KVA. Suppose we choose 
it's on your own choice but you can choose any biggest one or arbitrary any one suppose that here we we can choose our base kva is equal to 3000 kv and this voltage equals to 11 kv we can select it now after selecting these kva and voltage back to other two things that means impedance base impedance and base current can be denied by this two suppose this is base current base current means base kva kva if it is kva then if you multiply t or this is base kva by base kv base kva by base kv that means it will give you base current i base in amps so base kva by base kv it will give you base current in amps and from this base current, when this base current is known, you can find out base impedance. Base impedance, that means Z base. What is that? V base by I base. V base by I base. And that can be give you the base impedance. It will be in now base voltage suppose it it will be give you base voltage by base current here one thing kept in mind base voltage in general it's in kv it is in kv and here it is in amps so what do you have to do you have to convert it it in voltage that means base kv into 1000 then it will convert in va then it will be if it is 1000, that means KV into 1000, that will be converted in VA. Then, divided by base ampere, it will be give you Z base in ohm. Okay, it's clear. That means base impedance you can find out. Okay. It's clear. Base, Z base is equal to V base by I base. We will see later on what are the other way to find out the Z base. Okay. So, four quantity is known base KVA, base voltage and other thing. Now, let's see. Per unit means actual value by base value with the same unit. Actual value by base value with the same unit. Suppose that here my base kva is how much 1000 kva is my base it is selected as it is selected so 1000 kva is, is base and its power is how much power here it is it is actually it is, it is equal to 2000 and here it is 3000 what is this base kva base value that means we can say 
power unit power unit power of transformer 1 it is how much its actual value 2000 and its base value its kv and one thing it is same reading so it is 2 by 3 so 2 by 3 that means Point six six. It is equal to point six six power. So how much power it is? It is its power is point six six power unit. If here it is one by fifteen kV, that means base power unit power of tier two. What will be that? It will be. 1500 kVA by 3000 kVA that means it is equal to 1 by 2 that means it will be 0 0.5 0 0.5 per unit if it is suppose that if it is 5000 kVA it may be it may be 5000 kVA assume it then what will happen it will be 5000 but the base again it will be so here it will be here it will be 5000 by 3000 1.66 power now see what is the beauty of Parin method. Previous in previous calculation, its power. What you have to take? You have to take two thousand value is calculation value two thousand. Here it is five thousand. Here it is three thousand. Now one power unit instead of three thousand, we will put one power unit instead of two two thousand, we will put 0.66 per unit instead of 5000 we will put 1.66 per unit now see when we calculate instead of 3000 we have to put 1 instead of 2000 we have to put 0.66 instead of 5000 we have to put 1.66 that means the value all the value more or less closer to 1 a little bit less than 1 or a little bit more than 1 so calculation will be very very easier the figure will be very less calculation no more tedious calculation is required calculation will be very less and the figure 1.6 instead